up there. I can't take this shit no more. This motherfucker do one more goddamn crack. I'm going to slap him in his goddamn face. I don't care where we are. And he lived up to that shit. He walked those things, slapped shit out of Chris. And that's the history forever. Yo, what up, y'all? It's the Ronnie Ray Show. We're back again with the segment. As always, the segment. We get off my chest. We got to remember the classics. We got random lists. We got um, quick combo, and we got the shout-out portion as always, man. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the segment. Here we go. All right. Off my chest this week, we have a conclusion from one of the last ones we did. Will Smith apologized to Chris Rock. Man. <sighs> when I saw the thing, I was like, somebody making it up. Somebody going to come out. Jay Farrell going to walk out and... <laughs> Come out with light makeup on it, like, hey, let me listen and start doing this voice. I'm like, okay, no, Will walks out, sits down, so he's been clearing his mind. Gave a disclaimer, I've been getting myself together. So sit back and relax, I'm going to answer some of y'all questions. He sat down, he didn't say nothing to the camera, he went right to the first question. They said, why didn't you apologize to Chris Rock when you was doing the acceptance speech? He said, I, I wasn't even there, I don't even know. I wasn't there. <laughs> I just wasn't my hundred percent myself. He waited four months to say this. I'm like, I think he about to say, man, you know, something crazy, blah blah. But he was, he was cool though. I, you know, those actors sometimes you don't believe them when they apologizing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I didn't really mean to call out that, call that kid that. You know what I mean? I didn't mean to slap that that little baby or that old old man in the face, something like that. But Will. We know his background, so something had to be going on with him. So I believe him when he apologized to Chris. He said Chris wasn't ready to talk yet. Hell no, I ain't ready to talk yet, because he's not sure how mad you are. He might reach the phone and slap shit out of him. Who knows? Will apologized to Chris's whole family. He said he apologized to the Rock family. He saw what his mom said. He said he felt bad about that. Apologized to Tony Rock. Now, I would love to have hear what Tony Rock had to say about that, because Tony Rock was mad. He was like, I'm listening to Pac. Oh, yeah, it's about to be Pac. Still, he's mad at Will, but I may still cash those residual checks from all of us. But, hey, who knows? But Will said that might not ever be right ever again. So he said he felt bad about that with Tony. And he said what he did was, what he did, his behavior was unacceptable. It was. Because, like, Will, he was the guy, man. We, you were the prototype. I mean, my grandmother liked you, man. Like, you got grandmothers liking you, man. You don't cross over like that without being without not being likable. And you you played that role real good, man. And all of a sudden, you gonna slap Chris in the face. Then he said this. He said Jada had nothing to do on on what I did. He said what happened it was between me and Chris. Did Chris Rock kiss him in the mouth when he was wearing a dress on your TV show or some shit? I don't know what happened. Was it the card game y'all had at Teacher Campbell's house years ago? And he beat you in fucking spades of big wits and been talking shit to you? I like to know what that was. I like, since we know everything else, I like to know what happened. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure if Chris Rock did beat somebody in anything, he's gonna rub it in forever. That's why I beat your ass, motherfucker. We'll sit up there, I can't take this shit no more. This motherfucker do one more goddamn crack, I'm gonna slap him in his goddamn face. And I don't care where we are. And he lived up to that shit. He walked those things, slapped shit out of Chris. And that's the history forever. He said he felt like he loved people down. He, he prides himself on not letting people down. He said he's trying to feel remorseful but not ashamed of himself. And I'm like, ah, he's only human. And that's true. Like, he, only, you know, he just reacted and it just was a bad time. Nobody's perfect. So, Will, I'm going to say this. I really couldn't watch The Fresh Prince. It took me up until probably last week to watch The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air again. I got your book in there. I haven't read it. Now I can read it because you did you did come out with an, an apologize to Cat. And I believe you. A lot of people might not believe you, but I believe you, man. But it sucks that this is your legacy for a while. Like, you're going to have to do do something else <laughs> to get this back. Because you done, you done scared the shit out of kids now. Like, he was like the pie pipe of people. Like, people want to come run to him. Kids going to hesitate now. Hey, man, you want to slap Chris Rock in the face. You'll get back, bro. This is a bad day, man. So, I'm still a fan. You ain't lost us, man. We still with you, man. So, God bless, man. I'm out. That's off my chest. Next thing. All right, remember the classics. Today we going hip hop album, man. This is the hip hop album. Say what you want. 
And Tupac, me against the world, Biggie, ready to die. No, this is the one. May 15th, 1986. Run DMC changed the world. Raising Hell comes out. Oh, this is after Crush Groove. This is after the King of Rock. Rock Box, all this. This is it. They come out with this album with tracks like It's Tricky, uh, Walk This Way, Perfection, I'm Proud to Be Black. Man, this one was the first rap album I ever bought in my life. And I was hearing it because I was living with my aunts and my mom, grandmother and all her kids and stuff. And my aunt liked to play the same thing all the time. <laughs> he plays the same shit over and over. So I knew the words of the shit before I even got the album. She played that. I was into it every time she played it. When I when I heard Peter Piper, I was like, what is this? Never heard that before. It's Tricky comes on. My Adidas comes on. I'm like, where do they stop with this? Is it live comes on? Perfection. I'm not even looking at the word. I'll, I'll tell you the, the playlist. Perfection comes on. Hit and Run comes on. Raising Hell comes Man, come, man, what the fuck? Uh, really? Son of Bifert? That's just a, a, a like a, what, it's like a four bar intro. I was born son of Bifert, brother of Al. Betty's my mommy and runs my pal. It's McDaryl's, not McDonald's. The rhymes are Daryl's, the burgers are Ronald's. Come on, man. Lyrics and bars, dog. And the cool part about that, neighbor down the street, Darlin Cotwell. First time I ever said his name on any damn thing in years. Darlin Cotwell had some DJ shit when this came out. And when he played that, he was scratching with it. <laughs> when he got to Ronald's, he was like, it be, it be Ronald's, like, yo, damn, I thought that was on a song. Man, that song, you, you be illin'. Damn, I forgot about you be illin'. You be illin'. It was the real deal. But what made the album stand out, crossed over right because they had walked this way. Now that was a gift and a curse to me because Walk This Way is Aerosmith song and they didn't like sample it. They just did the song. And the song crossed over like crazy. The thing about the album I say is great as a gift and a curse because people only know that album for that. Like most people only listen to that album for that song. But the album is so dope. They were the first Rap act with they own gym shoe. Adidas? Cause they did a song called My Adidas. They said Russell Simmons called D what <laughs> called Adidas up. Like, y'all need to come down to Master Square Garden and watch us do this. And they said everybody got Adidas on, take one shoe off and hold it up in the air. The whole damn 15, 16,000 people raised their shit up and they got a deal. One of the greatest, one of the most important. Rap groups of all time, Hollis Queens, Run DMC, and Jam Master J. Rest in peace to Jam J. Next set. All right, here we go. This is um <laughs> the random list, and this one is hard as hell. I don't know. People are gonna be mad at this. I don't care, man. This is this is what I'm thinking right now. You know, this random list. The top 13 movies that were shot in the city of Chicago. This is, oh, this is going to be rough. But we going with it. I'm going with this one, man. I'm going to start at number 13. I'm going to go one week. And y'all like, what's one week? One week is an independent movie. But these guys, I'm a friend. <laughs> these guys are my friends. And I'd be remiss not to put them on the list. One week was about um, a guy. He, he had to take an AIDS test. And he had one week to find before he got married. So that was the movie, man. It was, it, was, it was funny, and it was deep, too. And it showed me the South Side of Chicago. And I seen it when I was in there. I just moved to L.A. It reminded me of home. So I love the movie, man. Shout out to Kenny. Kenny Young and Carl Seaton from one week at number 13. Number 12. <laughs> Y'all gonna be like, damn, man, really? But, man, I was a kid when this came out, and I just enjoyed watching it. Number 12 is Adventures in Babysitting, dude. <laughs> I'm like, what? Hey, man, I love that damn movie. Fuck y'all. Y'all can hate me if you want. Hey, man, I love that movie. Number 11, Untouchables, man. Untouchables, I seen it a few times. I'm just, I love De Niro as um, Al Capone. Sometimes you just watch the tape and just go 
to De Niro scenes. That's what I see. We talk about baseball when he busts dude in the head. I love that. But Kevin Costner, Sean Connery, you can't deny Untouchable. Number 10, Risky Business. Risky Business, Tom Cruise is pretty much debut as a star in a movie. Man, I remember going to see Superman 3. And this movie was with it. I'm like, I want to see Superman. But they showed this and I was like, yo, this is different. I mean, like nudity and shit. I'm like, yo, what the hell? He was a pimp and trying to get money for to get his money, mom stuff back. I thought that was crazy club. You watch it now and see who Tom, Tom Cruise is like 20, 18 years old. And now he's 60. So it's crazy. Number nine. One of the Chicago favorites. They shot one of the scenes down the street from here. Soul food, man. Soul food. Soul food. Fine ass Vanessa Williams, sexy ass Neil Long, and then um, the hot uh, Vivica Fox at the time. Vivica Fox was on everything then. They, I remember they like, black people go support this movie. Make sure you support Soul Food. They were, they were campaigning the fuck out of Soul Food, man. Soul Food stood up to the to, stood up to the task, man. It was entertaining. Number eight is um, Barbershop. Now, Barbershop, I like Barbershop. The ensemble cast, incredible. I, I, I was impressed. I liked it, man. It was, I liked it, dude. He said Entertainer um, became a star right then. When he did that movie, he became a real star with that. The Eddie character, hilarious. It started a trend. That movie started a trend. Like it, the gas station, the laundromat, you know, <laughs> oh, like the car wash. Well, the car wash was early on. But you know what I'm saying? Like everything was that and the cookout. I'm like, come on, man. Really? Number seven. This movie right here. Yeah, this is all Chicago right here. Number seven, the Blues Brothers. The Blues Brothers? But they could not do that movie nowhere else. Now, y'all gonna play New York and y'all couldn't go to Florida with this. Y'all had, they had to be in Chicago. This actually should be higher. So I should have put it higher, man. I'm not gonna even change it now, but it, it, it got the roots of Chicago. I remember being a kid going to see this and it was like, man, like, I feel like I'm home watching this movie. Like, that's right down the street. You know, that's over here. That's. That's right, though, you know what I'm saying? I was a kid knowing this. And that's that's declared as a black movie, though. You know what I mean? They had Cab Calloway, Ray Charles, uh, Aretha Franklin, uh, James Brown, all the, and even, even Shaq Khan was in the back. So the Blues Brothers is just, just hot business, man. Number six, The Color of Money, man. The Color of Money, to me, you talking about watching pool ball shoot around. Man, it, it, I'm, like, I'm 11, 12, like, man, this is some of the greatest shit. I ever seen in my life. It's one of my favorite movies of all time, bro. And I'm not lying because Paul Newman is just dope. He got the Oscar for that, even though they like, he should have got it for that. But he was dope in that. Tom Cruise is in the film and it's directed by the great Martin Scorsese, man. Number five is by far one of my favorite buddy comedies of all time. I, I leave the weapon came and blew it out the water, but number, number five is Running Scared. Running Scared, Gregory Hines and Billy Crystal I believe I believe they were Chicago cops. I believe that they were they were buddies since they were in high school. They knew each other's family, all that shit. I knew the state building was there, but then they shot in the state building. Like they, they shot that in Chicago. Like that's crazy. The the scene on the L, they chasing somebody in the car on the L. Like yo, you ain't getting this nowhere else. They going to downtown. You see all this shit. I'm like yo, this is incredible, man. So hey, soundtrack was amazing. <laughs> Running Scared, one of my favorite movies of all time. Number five. Number four, and y'all gonna be like, you cheating on this. Why you cheating on this? Number four, I'm gonna tell you, is anything that John Hughes wrote or directed. <laughs> because all his movies were in Chicago. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Home Alone, all the 16 Candles, you got Weird Science, you got all these movies, so you gotta put them, give them in the chunk, because I just do have to do a John Hughes list. Rest in peace to John Hughes. We getting towards the end. Number three, I'm gonna say this. Y'all gonna be like, why? Why this movie? I'm gonna tell you why this movie. Because this movie still sends me checks. That's right. Number three, Saint Last Dance. Yes. And y'all like, that movie was trash. Man, let me tell you something. They just sent me a check for fifty dollars, and I needed that shit. <laughs> this is from twenty to twenty-one years ago. Twenty-two years ago, I auditioned for this shit, dude. Love this movie. <laughs> I don't care if it was the worst movie. If it would get all the Razzie Awards. In the world, it would have been on my list. It's a classic, though. And I like, I'm happy I was a part of it, man. Number two, y'all be like, they ain't proclaimed Chicago. Why you saying? But they shot in Chicago. You know why? Because the Joker was walking past my damn job trying to shoot Batman in the street. <laughs> like, my old job. I'm like, yo, that's where I used to work at. 
And y'all know what I'm saying. Number two, Dark Knight. Dark Knight number two. Ain't it that? One of my favorite movies ever. He's gonna be on the list. I don't care if they shot one scene in this moment. He <laughs> would have been on the list. Dark Knight, legendary, man. Come on. Batman on top of the building, jump down on people. The Joker, period. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. I, number two, man. Dark Knight. Honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. About last night, the future, which I just seen last week. Y'all be like, man, why you got the future? I didn't see it. I didn't see it until recently, so I can't put it on this list of all these movies I've seen a bunch of times. Candyman, I seen it, but I was eh, eh, it was all right. I'm not a big fan of horror movies. The Negotiator, Backdraft, Big Bro. The Big Bro I should have put on. That's Jackie Chan. The Breakup, which I like. <laughs> and also, Roll Bounce, man. Roll Bounce is not on. Roll Bounce, you know why Roll Bounce ain't on? Because Wesley Johnson heckled me at a damn comedy show. He had the nerve to talk while I was performing. Like, what the fuck are you doing? No. <laughs> I dogged his ass, though. I dogged him. I dogged him. I dogged him enough that when I saw him a couple of months after that at a party and he stopped me. Man, you got me good with that, man. Whatever. No, no he, he's a super cool dude, man. So shout out to Wesley Johnson. And, and Roll Bounce is actually an entertaining movie. I don't think it's the best, but it's entertaining. Like, don't, don't tell me the acting was amazing. Man, come on, let's see with Bow Wow with the bat in the car. Come on. Nah, it didn't make it. Sorry, I liked it, but it didn't make the top 13 in my list. Number one, y'all, if you know me well, you know what number one is. Number one, Cooley High, one of my favorite movies ever. Just story, something I related to. It was Chicago in the 60s, supposedly. It was shot in the 70s. And I, I, I felt that movie. That movie had, had comedy. It had dramatics, man, at the end. You know what I mean? And the soundtrack was perfect for it. I, I, I think it's a perfect movie, just as far as, like, just, just the way it's written and how it was, um, how the story went. I think it's a perfect movie. You can deny me all you want to. Like, no, Road Bounce is better. No, <laughs> Road Bounce is not better than fucking... Cooley High. And I think Cooley High is the, is the blueprint to a lot of the movies that we've seen, you know, later on. I mean, House Party and all that stuff showing the coming of age stories of these young young black teens, man. That that movie, man, I, I obviously I wasn't around when it was at the theaters. But I can imagine how that was. It still has an impact on people. I caught it when it came on video. When it came on video, I watched that movie like five times in a row. And it's my favorite movie to this day. And it's also my favorite movie made in Chicago. So, hey, what's your list, people? What you think, huh? Y'all sit back and go down the list and figure out what y'all like on this month. So, hey, that's it. That's my list. Favorite movies from Chicago. Next segment. All right, well, that, that's, well, the show is starting back. We, we um, about to drop um, Saturday 13th. You know, we made it this far. Like, a lot of people be like, man, you ain't going to make it past 25. Well, how is it? How was it growing up in Chicago? I mean, it it was just a mix. Uh, it was great and sometimes terrifying all at the same time. I mean, I, re I remember nights when my mom uh, would, would wake us up and, and literally uh, be like, get down, get down, get on, you know, because we, mm. we lived on, we lived on uh, 47th and, and Woods, which, which is, it, oh, it man, looked... I, mean, I thought y'all stayed on Damon the whole time. Uh-uh, no, no, no. That, that, it, it, it looked... At that time, not like nothing like it looks now. Like I've right. gone back. I went to Shakespeare Elementary mm. uh, until uh, so I started off in private school, and then our family had a, a, a downturn. And I don't know if you remember uh, Fluky from uh, yes, the game, when 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 he was shot. Um, yeah, I, I, there there were kids in my school who were crying. Uh, I'm, I'm not even, I, this is not an exaggeration. Like, it got fluky, man. We're, wow. we're, we're, we're in fucking seventh grade, bro. <laughs> wow. Like, wow. like, like, I'm like, what the fuck? Where am I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was quite like, but, but at the same time, I learned a lot. Um, a, a lot of things I didn't want to learn, but things that served me well later on in life you know um so that's you know <laughs> you know i i i i learned how to you know don't people say hey 
You want to play a game? No, no, I don't. Fuck away from right. me. <laughs> I don't want to play a game. I, I right. got games at my house. Right. Fuck out of here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, too, you, know uh, jolly walking around uh, either. you know what I mean? I, 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 hey, let me talk to you. No, I don't know you. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to your friends. I'm not one of them. Right, um, right. And then, yeah. I mean, it, it's a different way to grow up, but it's, I, I think it served me pretty well uh, overall. Bruno Shaw's coming back. Bruno Shaw's coming back. <laughs> Bruno Shaw's coming back. What's the best thing about doing Growing Up Shy? The best part about doing Growing Up Shy, uh, I'll say two things, and I'm not even I'm not even kidding. Getting to hang out uh, with my man Roddy Ray, work with, listen to, joke with, uh, really one of the funniest people I've ever met, ever. Um, and and also it's fun to work with Lawrence. He knows his craft. He he, he knows all the lighting stuff, all the sound stuff. He, he the, the cameras, and it's just great to see. You know, I mean the the two of you are like a, a dynamic duo of of entertainment. You know, you know where, where you you no no, but I like look look at look at look at seriously. Ronnie and, and you guys, you guys don't know this because you weren't there, but I remember that comedy contest that we both went to, and mm-hmm. you said it goes on to this day. Yeah, yeah but Class you said mm-hmm. you said I'm gonna win this shit. Yep. And you know what? He won it. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking won it. He won it. You know. I think I performed stand up like three, three, four times at that time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I. You guys are great. But it's also fun to be around people who uh, set a goal, make a plan to get there, and then they work that plan. And so that's, yeah. Uh, and it's also fun to talk about Chicago and shit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right. oh, forget that stuff. Talk about me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is the only thing we talk about. I was in fish for compliments right there. He was like, fish for compliments. I'm fish for compliments. No, no. All right, here we go. Shout out portion right here. Shout out portion is me showing love to the people I came up in the game with, man. You know, it's not even, it's not for clout. It's not for, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to get nothing from this, man. It's just from the heart. And these are people that I know in the business. I've been in the business a long time, so I know quite a few people. And I just want to show them love. Now, I know they ain't ain't looking for this. They don't know I'm doing this. So I know I just do it, and then I send it to them and let them know. But this this shout out portion today is going to go to my girl, man. Actually, her birthday is this week. <laughs> when this comes out, it'll be her birthday. Like, her birthday's on the 8th. So, yo, say happy birthday to her, man. Uh, it's my good friend, Milana Jomay Jackson. Yo, me and Milana met. Milana is from Chicago like I am. I did not meet Milana until I, I moved to L.A. And she was there visiting, I think. And we met at a private screening of the Pootie Tang movie. <laughs> And we knew my old roommate, they were they were friends coming up, and we all sat together. And that's how I met her, and I realized that she didn't really like Pootie Tang that much. But Milana wound up being really cool. She reminded me of home, being around her. She was always fun. She was always always had a good vibe with her, good vibe. Her laugh is, is a, incredible. One of the best laughs I ever heard on anybody. One of the funniest moments, knowing Milana is uh, probably a few years ago, she comes to town. I'm living in Chicago. Her mother, her and her mother wanted to come to my show. And she thought she was still in LA with pedestrians had the right of way. She was trying to cross the street, thought pedestrians had the right of way. And dude almost I grabbed her and pulled her back. It's like, no, nah, we had like you would be dead. We we are arguing with each other, walking back across the street. Her mother to this day, when I see her mom, she's like, Thank you for saving my daughter's life, because she don't know. <laughs> so that's one of the hilarious moments. But bottom line, as an actress, she's a beast, man. Very funny, versatile. First time I ever saw her perform live was um at this place she was doing with um like all these women in it. And she literally stood out and then people were pretty much waiting for her to say something. And I like I didn't know she was that funny. And then you know, remember she telling me she wanted to do stand up before and all this. And so I, I believed her after that. I'm like she should do it. And but then to be an actress, to be in things like Animal Kingdom, FBI, um, Chicago PD, Strike Back on Cinemax. 
um, Lincoln Heights. When I saw her on Lincoln Heights, I'm like, yo, what the hell? Like, I don't even know this. But I, didn't, I watched it, didn't even know that was her. That's how good of an actress she is. But when I saw her go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, one of the greatest actresses of all time, Miss Viola Davis, on How to Get Away with Murder, she played the opposite lawyer of her, and she was giving her the business. I'm like, yo, do I know this woman? Like, what the hell? Killer, man. Nothing but love for this woman, man. Her, she, she is, she is talented. She's going for it, man. She deserves all the praise. So, I mean, nobody gave you no praise. I did. Hey, I'm going to call you your birthday, and I'm not going to tell you this is out. So, you're going to see it. You're like, wait a minute. What's this? Hey, hey, showing praise to you, man. Love you. God bless you. Thank you for being a friend. That's it. That's the end of the show. Leave a comment, subscribe, share, anything, man. Just, just like the show. You know what I mean? We just try to do things out here. We just talking to cameras and giving our expressions on stuff. So, man, God bless. Have a good week. I'll see you next time. Shout out to Lamo. We out.